So super quick explanation before we begin. This is gonna be a robot friend for a three-year-old this Christmas as a present. So I need to sort of be quick doing it. Don't think I explained that in the video properly. Anyway, let's carry on. So we're gonna be taking a look inside Brian uh, today. There's his little name on the back. We're gonna take him apart and see what's inside. If you recall, I don't know if you watched it. If you didn't, that's fine. We're gonna be taking the voice out of Brian. He does have a little voice. Oh, I've got to turn him on. Hi, I'm Brian of Confused.com. Oh. <laughs> I love being your robo friend. So he's got lots of little phrases. Yay! Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Cheers, big ears. Wee! Confused.com. Bye, small person. Buy small person, I think it says, not die small person. Hi, I'm Brian of Confused.com. So when I say lots, not that many, so we'll turn him off. Um, he's powered, in fact, let's have a quick look. How does that come out? Okay, powered by these, uh, I think they're LR44 batteries, so uh, three of them in series there, it looks like. Um, or is that parallel? No, series, that would be, wouldn't it? So they're 1.5 volts, are they? Hang on, let's have a look. I've got one here. And it doesn't say on it. I think they're 1.5 volts. So three of them together, that's uh, three, 4.5 volts to run the circuitry inside. Um, and I don't want to use that. In fact, I was going to cut this whole section out, but, uh, and I was going to put one of these in but I've realized that's probably not gonna fit. I don't really have the section to do it. So I might put it on the back here so he can be charged through his, through his bum um, and put a battery through there. Now, we'll take him apart in a second, but this is what's gonna go in it. Another circuit Hello, Toby. with a little voice. It's not as cool, but whatever. I wonder what the moon tastes like. Eat your vegetables, robot master. Hello, Toby. I wonder what the moon tastes like. Twinkle, twinkle, star. <laughs> That's so creepy. Oh, I was gonna... Okay, so I was going to use that, that little voice, but use the speaker in here because it sounds loud enough. And hopefully this will drive it quite well. But there's a fair amount of circuitry here because it's not like a little chip on board thing, which this probably has inside. In fact, I've watched a video of someone taking this apart. And that's basically what it is. And this little uh, pull back and go circuit on the back here. So um, we'll take them apart and we'll probably have to figure out where all the components are going to go. So let's make a start. Let's get these batteries out. I don't really need to do this, but it'd be nice not to have power running through the down thing when I'm poking at it, because he might start talking. Oh. Yeah, they don't say what voltage they are, but uh, they're certainly LR44 type. So it's quite a few screws here. I will fast forward through this bit, but we'll start on his chest, maybe. It might be captive, it didn't seem to come out. No, they're not captives, that one's just not coming out properly. There we go. All right, I'll come back in a second once I've got some of these bits apart. All right, so I've got his torso off now. It's his little head. Um, so all of this sort of comes, there isn't much holding it together, honestly. Four screws and then the torso comes off. This head sort of slots in. Um, so fairly easy construction and it's sandwiched in on this side here. And the arms are just sort of plopped in there. So um, it's, it's actually pretty nice. And the, the button on the front, so the confused.com logo there is a sort of a pillar on the end of a push button with a sort of weird, spring type mechanism to hold it down and make it feel a bit like a button. That presses on to this thing here. So that is a just a standard button with a blob on it. I think it's glued down. So I think we'll try and reuse that and we'll just cut off the rest of the circuitry. That'd be the easiest way. Um, maintain this circuit board in place. Now, the switch is 
actually part of this circuit board or rather it's wired through so I can cut all the traces going to power and that will essentially cut the whole thing off which would be nice. The speaker is wired here using these yellow wires I can certainly take those off and power is over here but I don't need the power section so we cannot bother with that. There isn't enough space in here. Uh, I don't think so. No, I don't think there's enough space in this section to place all of my circuitry. However, he does have, in fact, let's take that off, that little ball bit at the bottom. So it's got a, a ball joint with uh, some screws holding it in. So this should take the entire torso off. There we go. So that takes the ball joint off and it reveals to me that the base, which has this pull back and go system, has just got this in here. And I think we might be able to screw through the top of this because this has a small range of movement. So um, in fact, where does it go? Is it like that? Yeah. So the range of movement is when it's inside here. Let's put this back together to sort of. Take those screws out. So the range of movement appears to be pretty limited, which means that through the top of that uh, ball joint, there we go, that's the range of movement. So through the top of the ball joint, we can actually put a wire and it won't twist around, hopefully, if we make the hole large enough in the top and get wires in the bottom here. So let's get in the bottom section because there's not really enough space here. I did think about putting everything inside the head, which I thought would be cool. However, there's nowhere really to drill through without having exposed wires. And that's a bit of an issue with a three-year-old. Um, oh yeah, I didn't say this is actually going to be a present for a three-year-old for Christmas. Uh, it's going to be renamed Robot Master because that's what Toby wants it to be. So that's what he'll get. So let's um, see if we can take this part apart. <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but the screws are really, really deep in there. This screwdriver is not going to cut it. Um, and even this nice long red one won't quite fit in there. So I'm having to go really old school and use some of these super cheap precision ones. And they are thin enough to go down, but they're incredibly difficult to grip if anyone's ever used these. So we're going to give this a go. Really frustrating. So these are the batteries that I intend to use. I think these are PlayStation controller battery replacements, something like that. They're fairly cheap, 399 I think they are. They claim to be um, 4,000, sorry, 2,000 milliamp hour batteries, but I seem to remember only be able to get 900 milliamp hours in. However, I think that's fine for a kid's toy. Plus we're gonna make it rechargeable, so it's fine. Um, it says maximum charge current of 400 milliamps. I'll have to find out what this one is, but at 2000 milliamp hours, even if it's 1000 milliamp hour capacity, then one amp is fine. Um, we've got uh, that charge protection on there. So, well, it's probably discharge protection on the battery. Um, I haven't actually fully removed this, but it looks like it has those DWO1 things on there. So um, yeah, and a MOSFET. So they're probably okay. So let's have a little look and see if we can get it inside um, here. Now, I really want to get it across here. Maybe we'll have to take it out of the protective packaging though. I don't particularly want to do that, but maybe it's the best idea. If you remember, I, I don't know if you were watching last time, but I cut myself taking this battery apart. Oh God, I can't, can't get it out. Anyhow, let's see if we can do this. Just pushing that in. No, it's not gonna quite fit there. We're gonna have to uh, move some stuff around put it in slightly differently or a, a slight angle that'll probably work or maybe we can just do it straight up like that that might be okay actually if we sandwich it in between those two posts let's see that will also be fine as long as the thing goes back together yeah that will work so I have the cable coming across to the charging um, board this one here that will come out the side there. 
and then our microcontroller will sit in there too along with the driver board actually the driver board could possibly go at the top there might be enough room for that and it would make it convenient to put the speaker on so this is the driver board let's just pop this out this is the driver board so it's fairly small and it could I think it might be able to fit in here at some weird angle uh, and then yeah okay let's do that and all we need to bring up is power ground and the TX and RX and that should be it so God, I feel like I've taken it apart and I'm not going to be able to get him back together again. But that's the plan, I think. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see how the battery part goes. That's probably the most important part. It's what's going to dictate how I power this um, thing. If I use the onboard batteries, which are this 4.5 volt uh, sort of thing, non-rechargeable, basically a nightmare if you're going to uh, replace the batteries. Um, because mine's not going to have a sleep mode. I could change it. Maybe I could change it so that would power on the circuit. But even still, it's going to draw more current than this thing does. So it's a bit of a question over that. So I'm not sure. I would rather have it have a rechargeable battery. And that was the whole plan. So we'll go for that. Right. I'm going to go away and think about this. And I'll see you in another video.